about the tactical side of the game. And, and what today is about is it's about uh, identifying stages of the game that you're in uh, and how you adapt your game based on what that stage is. And, and what we're going to do is well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip my screen around uh, and I'm going to show you um, show you through uh, some of the, the slides and we'll take you through and have a bit of a chat. And then at the end, uh, we'll do a little bit of a Q&A. So it roughly, uh, it'll take about 30 to 40 minutes maximum. Um, the presentation will probably only take about 15 to 20, hopefully. Um, and then uh, once we do the Q&As and everything, it just depends on how many questions that people have. Um, and we go from there. So just let me share my screen. And I will be able to um, get you up and running. So can everyone see this? Comment in the chat bar, yes, if you can. Big Danny boy, yep, everyone can. That is good, that's what we want, all right? So, identifying the stages of the game. What this chat is about is actually getting you to understand that you can split or, um, I guess, pigeonhole or, or give um, uh, a meaning to each part of the game. And, and you'll be able to identify what stage you're in. And depending on what stage of the game you're in will depend on, um, you know, what your reaction to that situation is. Uh, and you hear a lot of people, um, I'm sure, you actually, have you heard um, commentators and players about speaking, you know, oh, I had to adapt really quickly or those who don't adapt to the game quick enough really struggle. Who here has heard that? Arab, you've heard that? Yep, Aminav, yep. So, yeah, so you hear that a lot, okay? Um, who here has found it really, really easy to bat for 20 or 30 balls or they find that they get to 20 and then once they start trying to score more runs or extend their game, they get out really, really easily? Yep. Um, what about when you're playing and you try and do this massive, massive, big whoosh of a shot and you go back and you sit back down and you go, why did I do that? Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Or when you're bowling under pressure and you, you bowl the ball and you get hit for a boundary and you're like, why did I bowl the ball there sort of thing? Or why did they hit me in that position? Yeah, so everyone's heard that and everyone's felt that. So what, what that's down to, all those examples, are actually down to your inability to identify um, what stage of the game you're in. So, and, and what you can do is once you have an understanding of, you know, what stage you're in, that will actually help you to identify uh, what sort of plan you have to put in place. So whether you're a batter or a bowler, depending on what stage of the game you're in, will depend on how you actually play the game. Um, you know, players can be extremely attacking or expansive, or they might have to save a draw or not lose a wicket. And you need to understand that in these certain stages of the game requires you to actually... Um, Play a certain way, and, and that's what we're going to talk you through today, okay? So we talk about um, the stages of the game being the lights. So can everyone see the, the, the screen with the, the traffic lights? Hopefully you can. So we, we talk about um, red light, green light, yellow light in our academies. Who, who here has been in our academy before? Who's done our academy programs? A couple might have, yeah. In our academy programs, what we actually do is when we take you through um, the nets and do our bat v ball scenarios and our, our, our games, um, we actually get them to play out these scenarios and, and sort of identify what stage of the game they're in uh, and then able, are able to uh, create a plan based on that. So as a batter, they might you know, need to score a certain amount of runs or a certain amount of balls. Or as a bowl, they might have a certain amount of fielders that they can put out on the boundary and whatever like that. So this is about identifying the tactical side of the game. So you go, you also might have heard of it as stage one, two or three or phase one, two or three. Uh, or you might have heard of it as um, three other names as well, which we'll talk to you at the end. But basically, we run it off traffic lights because it gives us a good uh, indication of players to identify really, really easy with a colour or a, a photo, what stage of the game they're in. 
All right. Now, first one is green light. Okay. And that's actually the attacking stage of the game. So you can see here, if you're in the green light as a bowler, it's these examples are, you know, you're three, they're three for 10 off five, or you've got them eight for 100 off 25. Okay. So it's about, you've got them under, under the pump. You're attacking, you're trying to attack. From a batting perspective, it could be if you've started really well in your innings and you're none for 40 off five, or you're one for 150 off 25. And the key to this um, stage of the game is you really want to capitalize on your position. Okay. So it's about sort of trying to plat uh, set a really good platform to finish the game off. Okay. If you're eight for 100 off 25, you see a lot, a lot of players take their foot out the gas and all of a sudden they're nine for 160 or nine for 100 or all out for 180. Whereas if you realise what stage of the game that you're in, you're in this green light and you're in this attacking phase and you know what to do in these attacking phases, there's a high likelihood that you can finish this game off and get them all out for 120. And if you've got 50 overs to bat, you've only got 120 to score, it makes it a lot easier for you, Okay. From the batting perspective, same thing. You want to try and finish the game off. So you've set the game up. You know, you're none for 40 off five or you're one for 150 off 25. You've got 25 more overs to be able to attack and be really aggressive. So as we said, it's all, it's all about capitalising on your position. You might look to take some more risks, okay? You might look to be a little bit more aggressive in what you're doing. Um, and, and you try, as I said, you're trying to finish the game off. So those are the key parts to that. From a bowling perspective, what we mean by attacking is when you're bowling or when you're in the bowling part, your plans, you want to really look to use your frontline bowlers. Okay. As we said, we want to finish the game off. You might have them eight down or you, you might have them three for five or five or whatever you use. You still want to use your frontline bowlers to be able to build a lot more pressure so that it breaks that sort of um, the back of the, um, you know, of the other team and, and it just, that finishes the game off. So, if you can use your frontline bowlers to continue to build that pressure and attack and you end up getting them three for five, they end up being five for five, that can be potentially a really key catalyst to you winning the game if you finish the game really, really well. Okay, the second part of it in from a bowling plan perspective is you really need to set aggressive fields. So think about what sort of fields this may look like, you know, putting an extra slip in or taking a fielder out. You know, when who here was listening to Nick's... Um, cricket lesson last week about identifying um, bowling plans and how, how, to, how to make those. So this is a key component when Nick was saying, you know, asking those four questions is, you know, if I put a fielder in that position, how is that going to change the thought process of the batter or, or something like that? So if you're setting an aggressive field in there, three for five, you might take cover out and put him in slip again. Uh, you might take square leg out and put them at gully or a short leg or whatever and, and try to create fields that will entice batters to make those higher risk shots or higher risk judgments so that that plays into your hands as a bowler, okay? When we say being aggressive, we mean aggressive line and length. And what I mean by bowling an aggressive line and length doesn't mean spewing the ball in middle stump, trying to um, bowl a Yorker every ball. Aggressive line and length means bowling a ball that's really asking a lot of questions. So that's not trying to cannon the ball in and bowl extremely aggressive and just getting them out every ball, but it's more trying to get them to play as many shots. So that good length, just above the knee roll, trying to hit the top of off stump on off stump, okay? That's where you want to be bowling. Having those aggressive line and lengths where you're trying to get them to play those shots, all right? It's not bowling on middle and leg trying to bowl nice and full and fast as you can and, and be over uh, aggressive, it's, it's in terms of the line and the length that you're doing. So as a bowler, I want to try and get the batter to make as many decisions as possible early in their innings because the more decisions you get them to make on the front foot, they've got to drive, they've got to leave it, or they've got to play as many balls as possible, okay? It's about making sure that you get them playing as many balls as possible. So that aggressive line and length is all about trying to bowl nice and full on that top of off stump, underneath the knee roll, and then going on trying to get the ball to, to um, swing away and catch the edge. Okay? So that's the bat are the bowling plans.
from the batting plans, again, you're none for 40 off five, you're one for 150 off 25, or whatever it may be. You're in a really good position. You're going really, really well. Okay, batting plans, you can probably afford to take more risks in those situations because the luck is on your side, but it's still that risk versus reward. You can still have to be aware that you may try to get out and you might, you, so you might find yourself by taking higher risks, you're more chance of getting out. Okay, so you just need to be aware of that. The second part is you need to target your strength. So when we say be more aggressive or attacking, if you've never played a reverse sweep or a lap sweep or a slog over cow corner, I mean, you know, an inside out drive over, over cover one bounce four, we're not saying that you need to all of a sudden just pull these uh, shots out of the hat out of nowhere that you've never really done before. When you're attacking, you need to be able to make sure that you can play your shot or be attacking in the shots that are the highest percentage of you doing really, really well. So who here has a strength? Who knows what their strength is as a batter? What's one of their strong shots that they can play? Lachlan, drive, a cover drive, yep, pull shot. So as long as you know what your um, strengths are, you can be really attacking on those shots because if you're attacking on your strengths, most of the time, nine times out of 10, you're able to execute them a lot better, okay? Does that make sense? So you don't want to go out there and go, right, I'm in the green light, I've got to be attacking, and then all of a sudden I'm trying to play a reverse switch or a switch hit when you've never done it before or it's not one of your strengths. You want to target your strengths. So if you cut the ball really well, if that ball's in your area, absolutely throw the kitchen sink at it. You know, if you're in the green light attacking phase and the ball's nice and full and you're a good driver, go really hard and hit the ball really hard down the ground, okay? The third part of this with your batting plans is you, you want to target your weaker or your more favourable bowlers. So you might find that you play against spin really, really well and you're not as good against fast bowling. So when you're in the green light, you might actually be more attacking against the spinners that come on, but just play within your means against the fast bowlers. Um, or you know that you've got a really good rep bowler at one end, but the other guy's you know, just a new cricketer who's not played too much. You can look to target that, that, that bowler more than putting a risk on and trying to hit the, the really good fast bowler out of the ground and go off 10 and over. Why don't you try and just go single, single, single against the good bowler and then when you face the, the, the one that's not as good, you'd be a little bit more attacking, okay? Um, that's the third part. And then the, the last one is being aggressive in your running between the wickets. You can find runs, you can sneak runs out really, really, really easily if you uh, are aggressive. You know, turning ones into twos potentially by targeting weaker fielders who don't have a, as good a throw. Um, it's making more risks, maybe trying to get off strike or running a two while the person's got the ball in their hand to put the pressure on the fielder. Okay, all of those sorts of things can be really, really impactful in this green light phase. Okay, so that's the green light phase. Remember, it's up there, but what does the green light stand for? What's the word? What do you need to do in the green light? Attack. Yeah, so it's the attacking side of the game. It's the attacking phase. Okay. Second phase is the yellow light or the containing phase. So it's bowling or batting, you're sort of one for 20 off five or three for 100. It's basically where the game isn't in any, you're not attacking or you're not in the red light, which is the defensive phase. And, and a lot of the games and a lot of people spend most of their time in this yellow light or containing phase. It's about you trying to wrestle for momentum are waiting for the opposition to make a mistake, okay? And when we talk about bowling plans, this is when you find that, okay, well, we've tried to be attacking and it's sort of, they're going at about four and over now. They're not, instead of being three for five, they're four for 50. And you're like, right, we need to sort of start taking less, less risks and being less aggressive and be a little bit more consistent in our lines and our lengths, okay? In here was a bowling plan. If you're a captain, you probably want to use your consistent bowlers or your tight bowlers who can just tie up and end at this stage of the game. And when we mean set dry fields, we just set like boring fields, okay? So rather than having three slips in a gully like you did in the green uh, light, yellow light might be, you know, you bring them out and you put cover and mid-wicket and you ring the field up and you just try to bowl 
stump to stump, fifth stump, just outside off stump. And you're really, really just trying to bowl consistently, maiden after maiden, dot ball after dot ball, and waiting for the batter to make the mistake. Okay? This is key. As we said, you're trying to just bowl ball after ball, ball after ball, and not go for many runs, and just see when the batter can make, has to make a mistake. Because at the end of the day, they're always going to... If you can do this for a long period of time and build pressure for a long period of time, it's inevitable that the batter will get bored and they will have to try and do something because they're not happy at how, how slowly they're scoring. They're going to have to start to take risks, okay? The fourth one in here, it's really important that you have a big push with your intensity in the field. You want to try to be saving as many dots or ones as possible. You want to really make sure that you're on, um, that you're on the ball, uh, you're really on it in the field and you, you've got that intensity because at this stage of the game, if, you can, if the batters can get cheeky singles and get off strike really, really easily, then you, you're deflating and losing that pressure. You want to try and build pressure for long periods of time with that intensity in the field so that something does happen and they end up having uh, a brain fade or they make a mistake and they try to do, uh, a, a, they try to run and they, get, they can't get it. Ananto, yellow light is exactly what I'm talking about right now, mate. You, you, sh you need to be listening to this because this is the yellow light, all right? From a batting perspective, again, it's about containing, okay? It's about building pressure. I like to think of it as an arm wrestle, okay? If you're arm wrestling as a team and you're trying you're in that sort of stage where you're trying to find out whether you're going to go into green light or red light you're in that stage of trying to get yourself in the best position possible all right so from a batting plan it, it's really about having low or medium medium risk shots so what you do really really well keeping it along the ground getting off strike and, and trying to build a partnership okay you can't go from red light being defensive straight into a green light. You can't just go from defend to attack straight away. You have to build a partnership and stay out there for a period of time. And like we said there, it's about rotating the strike and keeping the score ticking over and keep and building that partnership so that you can start to set a platform. So in this stage, you might, you know, you might have just lost a wicket. Okay. So if you were Originally, you might be one for 30 and then you just lost a wicket and you're coming into bat, you're not in that phase of being over-attacking. So you don't have to come out and start whacking them. You're just about sort of trying to be that low to medium risks, playing to your strengths, not having to go too hard and, and just try to build a partnership. Yeah, Nate, exactly like Smith and Marnus probably have to do. Okay? And, and, and that happens a lot. And it's just about keeping the score kicking over. You want to go up like four and over, okay? You're not going at six or seven. You're not going at one or two. You're just trying to get into a position where you're jostling for that momentum to be able to then build a platform and then take off and score really, really well at the end when you haven't lost wickets. You think about it. If you're four for 30 and you get your team out and you end up being four for 70 or 80 and you've got 20 overs left, that's just giving you a really big opportunity as a team to build that platform. So the last 10 overs, you can go Burko. So if you can keep batting for another 10 overs in this yellow light while building the score and ticking the strike rate over and ticking the run rate over, you're in a really good position by the end of the game, the last 10 overs. And that can then mean you go into the green phase. For the last 10, you'd be a little bit more attacking and you try to go up six or seven or in our terms, you know, white ball cricket and T20, that if you're going at less than eight and over, it's a good thing at the end of the inning. So you want to go up 10 to 12 and over, potentially. Okay? So that's, that's the yellow light. And then obviously the last part of it is the red light, and that's about defending. So from the bowling perspective, if you're bowling uh, and you're, the batters come out and they start whacking them and you're none for 70 off six or, you know, you're none for 60 off six or you're one for 200 off 40, you're in that stage where you have to try and defend because they're coming at you really, really hard. Or from a batting perspective, um, you know, you're four for seven off six or you're none for 50 off 20. You're not scoring quick enough. You're in that stage 
where you need to stop the damage. All right, red light, think bang, stop. You need to stop the damage and you need to survive and minimize the damage at all costs. Because from a batting perspective, if you're four for seven off six and you come out in the middle and you're over attacking in your uh, green light, you might be five for seven, okay, after three balls because you've just nicked one the first slip of trying to drive one through the covers when there's a huge gaping gap out in cover but he's got three blokes behind him sitting there waiting for you to nick one. So it's about identifying the stage, and that's a perfect example. You come out at four for seven, it's about stopping the damage. It's surviving and trying to minimise it. So it's about leaving, it's about defending, and trying to get yourself into that yellow light or containing space where you can start to then build a partnership. Because if you do this, you go out, you try to whack one, and then... Um, then you come out and then you get out and then the next person comes out and then you try to whack one, then you're in a, you know, you're in a bit of trouble. Um, Adam Eastgate, uh, none for 50 off 20. Why is that bad? It's not necessarily bad, but it's just that you need to, you need to start to consolidate because if you're going at two and a half and over for 50 overs, you're only going to be scoring 100. And that really puts the pressure on your bowling group as a team. So in that stage, if you're none for 50, the key to that is you need to start thinking about let's go and start building the run rate a little bit more. So from the bowling plans perspective, red light on the defensive stage, it's really about setting defensive fields. So remember, you're they're none for 60 or five or they're none for 50 or five or they're going eight and over. You don't need to have your two slips or a gully or no cover or no one on the boundary, okay? Most of the time when you're in this red light, put your fielders back because the aim here in the red light, what do you think we want to try and limit? Okay, what do you think we want to try and stop? If we're setting, by setting defensive fields and having four or three or five fielders out on the boundary, what is one of the main things that we're trying to defend? <coughs> Couple have got it. Yeah, runs, Liam, uh, Shether. That's 100% correct. Fours and sixes. You're trying to stop boundaries. If you are going at 10 and over, and then all of a sudden you can give the batter one run and a run, run a ball, and you go at six and over, you've already started that defensive, and you've already started that, um, that transition into the yellow light. Okay? But if you keep your field the same, and you keep bowling bounces and he's hooking you over square leg for one bounce four and you're going at 12 and over or eight and over for the next three or four overs, that potentially could be, um, you know, game over. All right? The second one, you need to have a clear plan, okay? You must have a clear plan in this stage, all right? You can't just go out and go, right, I'm just going to bowl and see what happens. All right, as we said, and as Nick would have said, you need as a bowling as a bowler, you need your field to match your length. So if you're bowling full and straight, you need mid wickets, cover, mid on, mid off, right back. You can't have a fine leg and a square leg if you're bowling full and straight because they're trying to drive the ball. Have a clear plan in place. Okay. The third one is limit the batter's access to their strengths. So if you're in the red light, you probably would have seen their strengths already because you've seen a fair bit of them because they're doing really well and they're whacking them. And you'll know what their strengths are. So if they're really good pullers and they can't drive very well, bowl fuller and set your field appropriately. Okay, if they're really good on the offside, okay, but they struggle through the leg side or vice versa, if they're really good off their legs or bowling straight and they can't hit the ball through um, the offside, Try to get them to hit the ball through the offside and see what happens. Take them, take their strengths away from what they do, okay? And the last one is in this red light phase. This is probably when you're going to throw the ball to the best, your best bowlers. You need your best bowlers there because your best bowlers have the ability to execute their skills probably better and they probably have better plans and they've got just more, um, they're calmer, Okay. So it'd be probably something really good to chat to Benny Lachlan about um, next week or Kyle Jamison and say, you know, what happens at the deck or, and, and everything like that. So it's, a, it's important to make sure that you use your frontline bowlers 
um, in these stages because they're probably the better ones that are able to execute more often. From a batting plan, um, there's little to no risk plans. So you can just go hammer and tong, okay? A partnership is crucial, um, but you're here to try and capitalise on as much as you can. So as we said, you might be none for 60 off. Um, sorry, that's the other way around. You might be four for five and it's little to no risk plan. So you just don't want to, you don't want to make a risk, okay? You don't want to take a risk, sorry. It's about literally shutting up shop and defending and just making sure that you don't get out, okay? And then once you, if, once you do that, that's when number two comes into it. So if you spent a little bit more time defending and just, you don't, it does not matter how many runs you're taking, it's just a matter of getting off strike or blocking the ball and leaving the ball and making sure that you don't get out, okay? And once that happens, if you both bat for a long period of time, you'll start to form your partnership. And then, as you know, you go back out into the orange um, stage and orange light, okay? The third part is keep positive and score in your zones. So you still might get a, a juicy half volley that you can play through your zone um, or, or anything like that, but it's about making sure that you stay as positive as you can be because this is the key. If you lose your wicket in this stage or you try to do a big shot and get out, A, you look silly, but also B, it's very hard for your team to continue weathering that storm. Okay, so you need to make sure that you keep positive in this situation and try to fight your way out of it rather than hit your way out of it. Okay, take the time, bat for long periods of time. If you're batting and you guys are four for seven, it might take you 10 or 15 overs to get out of that stage. Okay. Four for seven turns into little to no risk plans, creating a partnership and scoring in your zones by keeping positive. Four for seven off five, if you do that for 10 overs, then turns into four for 37 off 15, okay? And then that, as you see, you're in that yellow stage, you do another five or 10, that's four for 55 off 20 or whatever, and then you can try to sort of set yourself to get to a reasonable total rather than, you come in and it's the red light, you're four for seven, and you want to try and play that booming cover drive or try to hit the ball over the top and show the bowler who's boss and show off and pump your chest, and all of a sudden you're five for seven and you sit back down and your team gets rolled for 50, okay? The key part to this as well is that team support. Making sure that if you are in a situation like this and you're not batting, you're either already out or you're waiting to get in, the batter needs to be able to turn to where you guys are sitting and see that there's 11 players or nine players and coaches and everything like that sitting there supporting you, okay? It's really, really important to see team support, clap every run, cheer every run, cheer every boundary, clap at the end of every over, run drinks out, give them messages, ask them if they need help. If someone asks for a drink, run it out really, really quickly. Just show that you're there to support them, no matter who it is because that will help the confidence of the batter who's out in the middle and keeps them positive. Remember, when you're out there batting, it's two versus 11. It can be awfully, awfully daunting because it, there's a lot of pressure on you to perform and survive. And if you feel like you're suffocated a little bit because everyone's against you and you've got nowhere to go. Um, and a lot of the time, that's when people sort of try something silly and they lose their wicket, all right? So those four key areas, little to no risk plan. So you're just literally trying to dead bat it and get yourself out of that partnership, into that partnership, and then keep keeping positive and scoring in your zones. All right. So that's the end of that. I'll put my face back on. Let's go to some Q and A's. All right. So, Misha Campbell, you've asked, I've had coaches who've said that when we're in a good position to play, it's safe and slow because there is no need to make the runs fast. Is this good to do or should we be more attacking? So, Misha, that's a perfect example. It would depend on where you are in the game, okay? If you are uh, in the last 10 overs and you're one for 150 and you're wanting to try and get another... 80 off the last 10 overs, you can be a little bit more attacking. Um, 
But if you're in a really good position and you're none for 70 off six, you want to try and, you know, stay for longer, bat for longer, you might pull it back a little bit. But as long as you can identify the stage of the game that you're in, you can sort of then create a plan based around that. Hope that, that makes sense. Hunter, what would you recommend if you're the kind of player who can't block for long periods without playing any other shots? You can. That is the best thing. If you say that you can't do it, it is, in, it is 100% not correct. It is just that you probably don't have the mental patience or the skill, uh, the, the between ball routines and, and the time that you spend between balls to be able to reiterate that this is the important part. So Hunter, if you can start sitting there and if you need to do it, you remind yourself, well, this is what needs to be done. I'm in the red light stage right now, okay? And, and if you can't, spend time developing that skill. The best players judge themselves around their technique and their defence because if they can't defend, they're not going to bat for long periods of time, okay? You can't defend, you're not going to bat for three hours when you're a senior cricketer. You're not going to bat for five hours. doesn't matter how attacking you are or how many shots you've got in the book. You can't do that unless you know how to defend. You cannot score a lot of runs. So those would be my two things. At what stage do we play the way we normally play or follow this? This is and Sanika, so that, that's the beauty of it. This is your way of playing, okay? That's what we're trying to say. You, you are able to now identify the different stages and then create a plan based around that. So that is the way you play now. The way you play depends on the situation of the game and what the team needs. What if you are the best bowler or batter? Perfect. That means you, you should be able to identify these stages and have plans and help your team out. What can you do to not let your mind wander during the yellow light stage? Siddharth, I recommend you going back and looking at um, Peter Dean's um, top between ball batting routine. And that's what we're trying to say. You need to be able to create that time in between balls where you can be really, really, really switched on when you're batting and then switch off when you're not and try to take your distractions away from the game. Okay? Things like breathing, things like reviewing your, um, your process, you're reviewing your shot out of 10, positive self-talk, singing a song, distracting yourself, looking out of the field. Um, you know, all of those are the things that you can do between balls. And, and the key is that you can actually do this in each stage. You have to do this in green light, yellow light and red light because you need to be able to spend your time really, really effectively. Liam, that's a, that's a good question. If you are going really well and you start dropping off, do you go straight into the red light or do you go through a yellow? I, I think that you actually will go into, that's the perfect example. Um, you know, if you're going really, really well and you feel like you're struggling a little bit, just tone your, tone your batting down and your, your risks down and just look to get off strike. And that's what that yellow stage is. Remember, get a single. Bang, get a single, get a single, get a single, get a single. Once you become, become confident again, or the ball's in your, your zone, your strength, go a little bit harder, okay, and, and uh, really sort of take that game on. But as you said, if you're doing really, really well, and all of a sudden you don't just go to red light and you start going, oh, how do I play? I have to be ultra-defensive. If you're doing really well and you think you're in the green stage and you sort of come back a little bit, your first thought should be single, get off strike, get off strike, get off strike until you have that confidence again to start being a little bit more attacking. Hope that makes sense. We want to try and do that rather than being ultra, you know, throw the baby out of the bathwater and just go completely zero to 100 all the way. For different length games, would there be different ways you do this? Uh, yeah, Hamish, there would be. So in T20 cricket, you might be uh, in the green phase a little bit more than what you might be um, in red ball cricket, but you're always going to be in some, one of them. That's the beauty of it. You, you're not just not in any of them. Uh, you're always going to be in 
one of them at least, if that makes sense. So you might just spend more time in one of them, depending on the th format. Like I would think in the red ball game, you're probably in the yellow phase a little bit more or in the one day game, like 50 overs, you're probably in yellow, the yellow got like more than what you are in T20. T20, you might be a little bit more aggressive or defensive depending on where you're at in your situation. If you're bowling and you're bowling in the last 10 overs or three overs, you're definitely going to be in the red light. Um, whereas in the red ball, the last couple of overs of the day, you still might be in that green light because you've just taken three or four wickets and you're trying to rock and roll the, the tail enders and you need to get those wickets out before you can go back. So it just depends. Um, great question though, Hamish. Ryan Royce, what do you do if you're trying to manipulate the field so you can score in your zone? So as I said, that's yellow stage. So look to get off strike. You might bat out of your crease. You might hit a single to the sweepers out in the boundary, hit the ball either side of the fielders, just try to drop the ball and run. Okay, those are the things that you want to do. Bat on middle stump, bat on off stump, bat out of your crease, bat in your crease, further back. Depending on the, the situation, we'll, we'll call for that. But the key to that is playing around with it at training. Great question. As an opening batter, what stage would you start in? No idea. Depends on what, um, how you feel and what sort of player you are. That's a, that's a very good question, whoever it was. It was an anonymous one, but it's a very good question. David Warner most of the time probably starts in the green light, doesn't he? Okay, or he takes a couple of balls in yellow um, light and then goes bang, okay? So it's about you understanding what your game is as well. If you think that naturally you're not an aggressive cricketer, then you don't go in the green light. And the other thing on top of that is you also have to realise that if you are um, saying that you're going to go out and be ultra aggressive, you need to have the technique and ability to do that because what's the use of doing it? Go out, you sky ball, slog it, and you get caught out for three every single time you go out to bat and you just go, oh, that's just the stage of the game that I'm in. You need to understand that it just depends on your, A, your skill set, but also B, on where you're at with your game. Hope that makes sense. Thomas Armstrong, how can you contribute to the, uh, the field in a high-pressure situation when you don't bowl? Perfect, great answer. Chat, confidence. Um, in terms of your fielding, like running in and being aggressive, picking up the ball, throwing it into the keeper, um, being really up and about with your fielding. Uh, if you're not bowling, you still have other ways of contributing. Talk in the field, backing up, um, Fielding really well and being on, trying not to get a single. You know, we had, I had blokes that I play with or played with, they used to make it a game. Okay, there was a, they used to have a point system. Half a point if they misfielded it, point if they got a catch, all of those sorts of things. And at each break, they'd be like, I'm on five points, I'm on three points, whatever, mucking around. And they make it fun and it, it creates that, uh, that atmosphere of trying to do better for your team. So hopefully that helps, Thomas. Nate um, Antoniazzi, I think your name is. How do you do this if you're not a captain? You'll have to do it if you're not a captain. If you're batting, just because <coughs> you're, not a, you're not batting, uh, you're not a captain, you're out there batting in the middle. So you need to be able to create what stage of the game you're in and, and um, you know, have those plans in place. You need to make those decisions because the captain can't tell you what to do and neither can the coach. So when you've got the ball in your hand, you need to have a conversation with the captain and go, right, I feel we're under the pump a little bit. I want to spread my field out and have a couple more fielders out. So you're always going to be doing it because you're in the moment um, playing this, playing that game. Siddharth, what can you do to not get nervous or overwhelmed in the red light zone? I think the big thing is uh, understanding that you are in the red light zone and try to remember or write and have a bit of a plan on these are the things that I need to do and that there's pressure. Uh, the other part of it is using your time between balls is, is very, very important. Okay. Should we introduce this to other players, Lachlan? Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. Get them in. Get them learning. 
Tom Blows, what if your best bowl has bowled their overs? Very good point. You, you just go to your next best option. So, and the other thing is you might think that bowler number one is a really good new ball bowler or middle overs bowler, but not the best at their end of the inning. So you can pigeonhole bowlers and, as well. Like, you know, some players you see that they don't bowl at the death. Uh, I don't think Hazelwood bowls at the death very much. He bowls more at the start of his innings than in the middle of the innings. Um, because that's his ability and his, his, his skill set there. And then guys like uh, Paddy Cummins bowls at the end of the innings. Um, or Stark cleans up the tail, bowls an awesome Yorker. So he's the guy that you finish, all right, with your, when you're on red light and they're eight down and you're in a one-day game or T20 game and you need to either take wickets or restrict runs, Mitchell Stark, there you go, there's your bowl. You, you bowl your last five overs, your last two overs. Um, at the death because that's when they need him. And so you'll have a look at the key to this, uh, and that'll finish us off. But the key to this is watch the players when you're watching TV, watch the captains, watch the coach, take note of the bowlers and when they bowl, okay? Um, and it's really, really important, um, you know, making sure that you can identify, all right, well, why is Steve Smith or um, Payne or... Um, Alex Carey and the strikers or whoever, why are they making these decisions? And you can actually start to pinpoint, all right, that's why he's doing that because it's this stage of the game. You know, Nathan Lyon's not going to bowl in the last 10 overs of a T20 game, okay? So it's all of those things that you can really, really sort of start to identify and understand. And the only way you get better at this before, you know, creating a, a resource like this and having a conversation is just playing games. The way I learned it, was by making mistakes, stuffing up, bowling at the death and, and doing this, doing X, Y and Z and, or batting at the end of the innings needing to survive and me trying to hit a booming, um, you know, booming drive and getting caught at first slip, walking off and the coach going, what did you do that for? And then having a conversation with them about it. So what we're trying to do is actually fast track this for you. You know, you're learning these things instead of making the mistakes of doing it of 10 or 15 years like we've had to. Um, if you can learn this, trust me, your game will increase and improve out of sight. All right. Thanks, to God. Uh, thanks very much, guys and girls. Um, so uh, in a couple of hours, we've got Cameron Boyce on. So myself, uh, I think, and Fitzy are going to pop on for that. Uh, and, yeah, we'll see you then. Speak soon. Cheers.